Okay, we need to be able to derive the time dilation formula, which is a piece of maths done by somebody called Lorentz. It is based on Pythagoras, so any third grade student should be able to do the, understand the maths of this. <coughs> so we have our light clock, which is uh, the, the light is bouncing from the top to the bottom to the top again. And this is in our frame of reference. Um, and what happens if this light clock is moving in another frame of reference, or another person is looking at it moving in our frame of reference? This is what we have to do. So basically, the length is going to be different. The length, the distance travelled by light, is going to be further. But if it takes, if it's further, it must take more time because the speed must be the same. Everybody must measure the speed as being the same. So, let's say that. The clock is in my frame of reference, and we're going to think about what the observer in a different frame of reference sees of my clock. We know it takes from there, from the top to the bottom, is a, a, a tock. Um, the length is the distance between uh, L is the div distance between the top and the bottom, but the light will take this path instead. Now we know that horizontally the distance travelled is going to be the speed of the frame of reference or my frame of reference relative to the other times by their measurement of the time that it takes. Since we're looking at their measurement of what happens in my frame of reference. So this is Vt prime and that length is going to be L prime because that's their measurement of what happens in my frame of reference. So we're basically going to use Pythagoras and we're going to have to cancel out any reference to L because we just want it in terms of velocity uh, and uh, time. So, here we go. This is uh, the same as before. This is uh, L prime as measured in the other frame of reference. This is L, my frame of reference, and this is V T prime. This is going to be the, the base of this uh, triangle. So we're basically going to use Pythagoras. Now, we know that L prime squared is going to be equal to this squared plus this squared. And there we have. Now, what is the speed on the diagonal going to be? We know the speed is distance divided by time. Um, so is distance divided by time, which is L divided by T. So in other words, the length L prime is equal to speed times by time. So what we have to do now is take this Pythagoras and substitute this value for the length as speed times time. So L prime is going to be T prime times by C and L squared is going to be, I believe it's L squared for now, by Vt prime squared. Now we're going to divide both sides by c squared. So L uh, t prime squared is equal to L squared over c squared plus Vt prime squared divided by c squared. Remember, all we've done is divided by c squared. And but, so we rearrange this to make L squared over c squared uh, the um, term on the left hand side, so we just rearranged it and moved uh, Vt prime squared over c squared onto the other side. But as I said, L squared over c squared is equal to uh, our time squared. So we now we have this. Our measurement of time squared is equal to the time squared measured in the other frame reference, t prime squared, minus Vt prime squared divided by c squared. And we can tidy that up a little bit, factorising. And so we make t prime the subject, t prime squared is equal to, so we basically divide both sides by 1 minus v squared over c squared, uh, is t prime squared is equal to t squared minus 1 minus v squared over c squared, and then we square root everything. So t prime is equal to the, the square root, is, is t divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. This is called the, the Lorentz factor. Um, so t prime is, um, a measurement of weapons in my frame of reference as measured by the person in the other frame of reference. T, without the prime, is how I measure the event in my frame of reference. And this is actually going to be proper time because the event is still, the clock is still in my frame of reference. 
So here we have it. This is basically what we found out. T prime is equal to 1, or T divided by root of 1 minus 3 squared over C squared. Uh, but the other person sees this, the moving frame of reference sees this in my time of re uh, frame of reference. Uh, 1 over 1 minus 3 squared over C squared is also called gamma, or the Lorentz factor. So T prime is the timing of this event, of this clock, this ticking of the clock, as measured in the other frame of reference. So this would be, it takes a long time, it's going to be, let's say, 5 minutes for this big clock. What happens to T is what happens in my frame of reference. The clock is at, is static with respect to my frame of reference. So this is going to be proper time, and it takes less time, three minutes. So when someone observed an event in another frame of reference, for example, uh, the, the, an event, the TOC, the T prime, it takes a long time for an event which happens in the other frame of reference. So, in, in, well, we're looking at the other person's observation of what happens in my frame of reference. So my clock is taking three minutes for this event. The other person will time on their clock five minutes. So do you think that my clock is moving slowly? So moving clocks slow down. Moving clocks go slow. So it means that if somebody's um, moving relative to you, their clock is going slower than you. They're going to age at a slower rate than you do. Another example is if you observe a five, a three-minute event occurring in another frame of reference, to be, you make it, let's say, five minutes. Remember the sandwich. It takes three minutes to make a sandwich. I'm going to measure this as being five minutes. So this is a time dilation formula. This is as measured in the moving frame of reference, and this is as measured in my frame of reference. This is proper time. So this is the uh, time for the event, the proper time. And this is a time as measured, um, um, the time measured as perceived by the person who sees a moving clock. So moving clocks go slower. In the data booklet, you have these two equations. Um, Lambda delta t, which is the time of an event, is equal to uh, lambda uh, t naught. t naught is um, the proper time. Remember, this is this t here. This t naught is the proper time. So, and you multiply by a factor which is always greater than one, and this will be, let's say, five minutes. This will be three minutes. So, a three-minute event in a moving frame of reference is um, is going to be observed by the observer has been a, th a five minute event and this gamma is the Lorentz factor so this is proper time this is where the events which is the beginning and the ending of the making of the sandwich happen in the same point and this is the measurement of this time duration of this event which takes place in another frame of reference so you need to sketch this gamma factor one divided by one, the root of 1 minus 3 squared over c squared. And this is what we have here. This is the, um, try it on a, on a graphical calculator. y is equal to 1 divided by the root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, where v, uh, v is the variable. So it's 1 minus x squared divided by, uh, you could say, 1 squared. So you could try this, and this is the shape you'll get. And what it means is that for very slow, very low values of C, the gamma factor is 1. Even when we're at 50% of C, the gamma factor is slightly above 1. The time dilation doesn't change very much. As you approach C, uh, it becomes asymptotic to C. So in other words, if we're at 90% of C, then you're going to have a factor of 2. When we get 95% of C, we're going to have a factor of 3. And when we get 99.9, .9 factor of C, we're going to get a very high factor, so the time dilation um, will be quite considerable. This is another way of presenting it, and it's easy to read off the values here. So if we have 9.9 .9 times the speed of light, it will be 2.2 uh, gamma. Gamma will be 2.2. If we have 95, it's going to be something like 3. If we have 99, it's going to be something like 5 times so an event that is happening at 
percent the speed of light if we see an event happening at 99 percent of, of, of the speed of light and in the in that frame of reference proper time is one second we're going to measure this one second event as taking five seconds here's an, another example this pi on this pi meson travels along now and we've already looked at this the length of the lab is 10 meters who's moving the pion or the lab or both depending on the frame of reference how much does it take or well, which is proper time well the star and the lab at the same point of time is going to be proper time and that only works for pion because for us the, the, the beginning of the lab and the end of the lab are in different places so we measure not proper time as 3.5 times 10 to the minus 8 so if our time is 3.5 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds and we're going to have a prolonged version of time uh, the actual proper time is going to be less than that by a factor of uh, of the, the Lorentz factor and you must find out what this is for 0.95 but, um, V is 0.95 and then find out what the factor is so for the pion it actually takes less time it's like a tenth of the, of the amount of time remember for the pion for, for the pi meson uh, the beginning of the lab and the end of the lab is in the same place look the pi meson is still it's the lab that moves according to the pion but it measures proper time because it's in the same place relative to itself so the formula we're going to use is this so we need to substitute instead of V we here we have 0.95 times C so it's 0.95 divided C divided by C square that subtract that from 1 square root it and find the reciprocal this gives the gamma factor and then you multiply the gamma factor by um, the real time, the proper time, but we don't know what the proper time is. We know what our version of time is, and we're not measuring proper time because the beginning and the end of the lab are in different places. So you basically divide by the gamma factor, so you end up with a smaller value of time. So for the proper time, it might take um, a, a quarter of, of the amount of time it takes here.